Hello, I'm Randy Padfield, Editor-in-Chief of Aviation International News. I'm sitting here in quite a luxurious MD Explorer, which happens to be owned by the CEO of MD Helicopters, Ms. Lynn Tilton. Lynn, how are you doing today? Doing great, thank great. you. Uh, thinking about you and, and the aviation industry, I would suspect that most people in aviation know you as a CEO of MD Helicopters, but probably don't realize that you were the founder and are the CEO of an investment fund called Patriarch Partners. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you started this fund and uh, what its goals are today? I started this fund or this platform of investment funds back in December of 2000 and actually after having finished a career and being ready to retire I decided to come back and give something back to the world and I thought that if I bought companies that other people would otherwise toss away as being too far gone and if I saved the jobs that would otherwise be gone that really I would add value to the world and it, for me it's really about keeping people working and saving US manufacturing and saving great American legacies that would otherwise go away. And so it was really my journey, my destiny, to make the world a better place. It just so happens that MD Helicopters was one of those 70 companies that we acquired in that journey to save American jobs. Well, getting back into avi aviation again, what led you to uh, acquire MD Helicopters then? I've always loved beaten down brand names because no matter how far gone they are, you usually believe because of the recognition of the name that you can change enough to rebuild the company. And so that's one of the things that I look for because when you buy something that has been destroyed over 10, 20, 30 years, mm. it is such a difficult job. So you have to have a few things that work. And usually if there's that recognition of a brand name, that's one of those things that will help you be successful. And so I got a call from Wachovia Bank, who was the lender, who was really liquidating the company. And they said, look, Lynn, you know, this one may be too far gone, but we know you love great brand names. This is MD Helicopters. It was McDonnell Douglas. It was Hughes Helicopters. I said, I'll get on a plane. And so I got on a plane and I went to the company and really it was shut down. I mean, there was no supply chain, no manufacturing line. It owed over $150 million of debt. But I started calling customers and they were angry. But I said, if we could fix this company, would you buy it again? Would, would you buy the product again? And they said, we love the product. And so I thought it could be saved. What more needs to be accomplished with MD? Uh, it's just the beginning. I mean, we're back. You know, I always say, you know, for, for a long time we were saying the phoenix is rising. And now I say the phoenix has risen and the eagle has landed. We are delivering aircraft. We're selling aircraft. We're, we're very strong on customer support. But now I get to really be creative and innovative. Um, MD Power, which I think is an industry changing program because we're going back to the installed base. We're making it affordable to budget by the hour, even on a 30-year-old aircraft. I think that's really going to be um, a very good program for our customers. I'm also willing to guarantee parts, which shows people that I really am delivering. Um, you know, with a 95% fill rate in the first 24 hours, you know, you shouldn't be beaten down so hard. Um, but until I never have an aircraft on the ground waiting more than 24 hours for a part, I won't be happy. So we need to keep improving customer service. We need to, you know, continue to audit our supply chain, keep moving to fewer suppliers, keep vertically integrating where it makes sense making sure that we reduce the complexity of this business and now we're innovating you know as I said we have a partnership with Sagem to do all of our new avionics and they're working with Honeywell who have done most of our uh, aircraft so the integration is going to be much more simple we're working in a partnership uh, Rolls-Royce is working on new engines for us to keep making things more powerful with the 500 we're moving on 45 year old technology to turn that fuselage into composites. We announced a new blade for the single engine, which was in testing right now and will be available by mid-year, the 525 blade, which was listening to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on a new control and hydraulic system for the 600. 
So it's exciting times yep. now. Now we're doing stuff that's moving us forward. Now, Lynn, I've heard you say that you're interested in building a major aerospace platform and that perhaps part of this platform would be acquiring one of the struggling very light jet manufacturers. Can you elaborate a bit on this? I, I'm fascinated by the VLJ market. I've been looking at it for quite some time and I've been working and doing due diligence on a number of the companies. Uh, I knew there were going to be problems just because, you know, cash was so inexpensive for a while. Liquidity was driving the financial markets and so these VLJ companies were raising a tremendous amount of capital based on future orders. But knowing what I know and how difficult this business is and, and, to, and to make money in this business, I knew that they'd run out of cash. And so I've been standing by the sidelines waiting because I buy broken companies. That's what I do for a living. Um, but I do believe there's a very large market for VLJs. And so what I'm trying to do is pick the, the aircraft that I really think is a great aircraft. Because like MD, I knew if I got to the other end, I had the product to sell. And then yes, I would like to buy a VLJ company. I think I might do that before year end. And that, that would become part of the aerospace platform. Not that I would integrate it into MD, but I'd use the same infrastructure, service centers, you know, uh, same distribution channels and parlay off of what we have and, and frankly I'd like to put it on the same site because VLJ manufacturers are far ahead in terms of technology and composite technology. I think we can learn from each other. We're taking it from the, uh, the helicopter cruise levels up to the business jet cruise levels and looking down and obviously you have a lot of experience in the finance and, and investment funds. How do you see the current credit crisis and uh, other problems, possible recession affecting the economy? Well, I think the economy, I think we're already in a recession. I've been very public about my belief of what's going on for about 18 months. Yeah. People thought I was spreading fear and I was just trying to spread truth. I think we have a real credit crisis going on. Um, I think, you know, the mortgage market as well as the structured vehicle market, uh, like all things, we take things to excess and then they snap back. Liquidity was long a facade that hid the truth, which was that we really were starting into a downturn. We didn't let it happen. And so now there's a false floor and it's opening. And when the banks don't have money, they don't lend. And when they don't lend, small businesses and troubled businesses don't have money. And when you cut off the cash, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy to destruction. And what happens in tough times is big companies, strong companies have the cash, but those that need it most don't and we're going to see a lot of small companies go away. It's why you're seeing these VLJ manufacturers shut down because they still need so much money mm. to get to profitability that it's the banks will not lend to them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. For AIN TV, I'm Randy Padfield. <laughs>